Okay, so this is just a somewhat unique occurrence. Um, <clears throat> we've got one of the popular uh, itinerant uh, frequencies. In this case, 464.550. Um, in any urban area, you're, you're going to have multiple users on these frequencies um, at any given time, especially these few. The thing that makes these frequencies unique uh, compared to the other ones, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up a list here. is that there are a couple frequencies uh, in the UHF band and the VHF bands, uh, VHF high and VHF low, um, that actually allow you to use them, um, their itinerant frequencies. And you can use them for simplex or you can use them for a temporary repeater or a portable repeater. And those uh, in the UHF band, those four frequencies, well, Actually, it's eight free, well, four frequencies um, are 451.8, 451 .8 125, 464.5, and 464.55. So brown dot and yellow dot. Now, the inputs for these four pairs are the standard. I mean, it's the standard five megahertz offset, so for, for UHF. So normally this frequency, 469.550, uh, would just be another um, itinerant, you know, simplex frequency, just like 99% of the usage of 464.55 is uh, simplex. And just like the usage of the frequencies nearby, like 464, 4875, and 464, 5125, 464, 5375, 464, 5625, and, you know, 469, 5625, 469, 5375, 469, you know, these frequencies um, would be simplex. Uh, and like I said, 99% of the usage is simplex. But... A temporary repeater using the standard 5 megahertz split, so that means that if you were using a temporary repeater on 451.8, the input would be 456.8. And if you were using one on 451.8125, that would be the input. Um, so this is a, it's up to 35 watts. Um, I have the input in here as kind of a demonstration. Uh, of course, there's nobody on the output right now, but um, the folks using this uh, repeater are only uh, two or three miles away. But I'm not saying I'm going to be able to hear the portables on the input, but I might. Um, they're running a DCS tone, DCS code, I should say. Um, the code is well known, uh, so I'm 99.9% .9 sure I know who it is based on the uh, the DCS uh, code that they're using and the and you know the fact that they're running a temporary repeater uh, on this particular frequency. Like I said, there's only four uh, pairs that you can do that on, and then the Frequency plus five megahertz becomes the input. Now, if you run a repeater on any of these four frequencies, or these four pairs, I should say, you have to accept the fact that there may be somebody else. And if you're in a large urban area, there probably is somebody else, um, not only using the output frequency for simplex operations, but also and or the input frequency. And you don't have interference protection against that like you do with a normal um, business radio license. So it's just kind of a, 
it doesn't happen all the time because they're only temporary repeaters. Uh, kind of a cool thing to have um, stumbled upon while uh, doing kind of a frequency survey uh, of the area. And that's something for another video, you know, programming uh, radios to um, say the FRS frequencies, um, you know, the 22 FRS simplex frequencies or the other uh, uh, itinerant frequencies, um, you know, like like 469.5 or uh, uh, 462.7625 and, and these frequencies. Um, if you want to know, is there somebody else using these frequencies? Same with the FRS channels. Um, on a regular basis uh, in my area. Um, and if so, you know, how far away are they? What tone or code are they running? Um, and then there's the obvious ones that you want to avoid, which are the default ones, the out-of-the-box ones. Um, but yeah, those are, that's kind of what I was about to do, is kind of putting together the script, if you will, for that. And I stumbled upon uh, these guys on... 4648, correction, 464550, uh, running a uh, repeater. So again, this has to be temporary. It has to be portable. Um, it's for special events. Big, big events will have one, will have multiple. Um, they'll have, you know, maybe one or two or three or four of these set up each on one of the four pairs, and then they'll have another frequency or two that they're using for talk around. Uh, usually the frequency for talk around will be um, one of the lower power frequencies, like, you know, one of these uh, frequencies in the 466 and 461 range. Um, it could be, you know, 469, 4875, although that's kind of silly because it's right next to the input, but, um, there's a lot of low power frequencies that are available uh, for use. And so it could be any one of them, assuming they're licensed for it. And most of the um, event management companies are licensed for a lot of these frequencies. And uh, the one I'm thinking of is, is licensed for several frequencies in the 466 uh, low power range and the 461 0375 to 461 3625. And so it's just these frequencies, the low power frequencies. And it's also worthy to, to note that you cannot set up a repeater on these other frequencies, even though 4610375 has a counterpart that's also a low power um, adherent frequency. So just something that, uh, you know, you run across and you're like, hmm, this is interesting. All the people on this frequency have the exact same signal strength. They might be running a repeater. If it's 451-800, 451-8125, or 464-550. If it's one of the inputs, so add five megahertz, um, check the, uh, the output. You know, if, if you hear activity on 469.550, check 464.550 and see if you're hearing simplex, which you probably are, or if you're hearing the input to a, a temporary repeater. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.